Bug Appetit. Here we go. I think most people are really kind of turned off by bugs in general. A lot of people think insects are germy or gross or disgusting. Trying to get people to eat insects in our country or in Europe is really difficult because they have such weird attitudes about insects. They say that 80% of the world's cultures eat insects. So we're the weirdos because we don't eat them, basically. A lot of people would be surprised, but one of my favorite dishes are tarantula spiders. And they're quite tasty if they're prepared right. And I feel a little bad because I know tarantulas are long-lived and fairly intelligent animals. But then again, so are cows, and I don't know how many people have problems with eating those. And I'm going to singe off the hairs. And then into the hot oil. people, which is why people get venomous spiders people are afraid of, so, you know, people might have negative, negative feelings about some insects. But obviously, there are lots of them around, lots of them are edible, and as David has shown us, some of them are even delicious. I like to think of myself as a culinary artist, and in fact, a lot of the recipes that I do in public demonstrations are more based on theater than on cuisine, really. It's performance art as well as uh, visual art to make the food look good as well as taste good. I've probably done hundreds of bug cooking demos. I also get these sort of prestigious invitations to do... Uh, uh, I did a week's worth of science fairs in Roswell, New Mexico. And I've done programs at the Smithsonian and... San Diego Zoo, and some places that are fairly big name. You know, I write for a living, and I've actually written 19 books on subjects all the way from seals and sea lions and gray whales all the way down to cockroaches and slugs. This book that's coming out, they wanted me to illustrate it, and they didn't have a problem with me kind of just messing around with the rhythm. He allows me to explore them first, so I might just immerse myself and I'll even Google and find all different types of reference of bugs. And then I'll just draw some and then he'll come and sit with me and we'll look at them and he'll st and I'll be redrawing because, oh, he'll point out, you know, that, that there's um, inaccuracies. Those are big ones. Little friends. Actually, these aren't that, that It that wasn't. Big what I signed up for when I first met him. I didn't know that he was one who ate bugs. He has to be tough to get along with me, that's for darn sure. I have sure. trouble figuring out which... He has uh, an affection for odd creatures and misunderstood animals and um, slugs and snails and slimy and creepy things. We have to live in harmony with insects. By converting land into housing, we're basically taking out the habitat for lots of insects. Uh, we're doing a lot of damage, and unless we change our ways and be more respectful of these smaller cogs in the big wheel, we're going to be in for some trouble. I'm definitely not obsessed with bugs, but I'm obsessed with all living things. He really does need time to just be in nature rather than out performing about it. 
he had a stroke in the in his brain stem. He's he's a harmonica player, and he had lost the right side. I mean, it was it was very scary. Brought that in, and I thought if he can't play the harmonica, then it's pretty much over for him because that's where he gets his mojo. Good. The thing about harmonica playing is, I say, it's communicating and being able to express something and move an audience and get them to move you is all about communications. Whether you're writing or whether you're public speaking or whether you're playing in a band. So that's what I am, a communicator. <laughs>